Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. GM going greener while Honda teases its truck and a personal welcome for Warren Buffett. This is AutoLine Daily for Wednesday, October 8th. I'm Nicole Geperink. John will be along a bit later answering your questions, but first, here's the news. And we'll start in Detroit with General Motors, where there's serious talk about Chevy growing its green lineup. With a new Volt due in the next year and the Spark EV only available on America's West Coast, Automotive News reports that the company is looking at an all-electric small car with a 200-mile range. Sources say it's based on the current version of its Sonic subcompact, but won't be available until at least 2017. Meanwhile, there's bad news on the Cadillac front. It looks like Lincoln's MKC may be taking sales from the SRX. Though still outselling the smaller crossover, the financial website The Motley Fool reports that year-over-year -year sales for the Caddy CUV dropped for July and August, stopping any growth in its tracks. Maybe Cadillac should hire an Oscar winner to wax lovingly about its car. Wrapping up, our GM block, there's more bad news, but this time from Morgan Stanley, where auto analyst Adam Jones issued a warning to investors yesterday that he was cutting his profit outlook for Big Blue. Those red flags sent the stock down 6%, a dip of almost $2, finishing below the IPO price from 2010. Of course, GM is hoping that the new midsize trucks temper some of those Wall Street worries, something that Honda doesn't have to think about for a year or so. As you probably know, it discontinued the Ridgeline this summer, sending the pickup designers back to the drawing boards and CAD booths. And if you're any good at visualizing from a silhouette, then you probably don't have to wait until next year when we'll get our first look at the new Ridgeline. As you might expect, if that's all the company is showing us, Honda remains tight-lipped on all details around the midsize truck. By the way, there's a viewer question on the Ridgeline coming up after the break, so stay tuned for that. As you might have heard already, millionaire Warren Buffett is going to start selling cars around the country. Well, he's not really becoming a car dealer per se, but his company Berkshire Hathaway just bought America's fifth largest auto retailer for nearly $8 billion. And as fate would have it, the chairman of the National Auto Dealers Association paid Autoline a visit yesterday to record an upcoming edition of our television show this week. So naturally, our panel asked Forrest McConnell what it means that the so-called Oracle of Omaha is getting into the retail car business. I think it's a great endorsement of the franchise system and of course Warren Buffett is a, a genius and is, you know, realizes that the franchise system is really good for consumers and the best way to sell and service cars in this country. So we're excited to have him uh, as a partner. If you want to see the whole interview with Forrest McConnell of the NADA, it premieres next Thursday, October 16th on our website and also on public broadcasting stations around the country. And before I turn it over to John for You Said It, remember you can still check out any of our 11 individual Paris Auto Show interviews at our website or YouTube channel anytime you want. Next up, here comes John with your questions and his answers. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Bradley has been watching this brouhaha about the Jeep Wrangler and wants to know, my guess is the Wrangler would be the easiest of Fiat Chrysler's SUVs trucks to convert to aluminum body. Would this really help the Wrangler's MPG, or is this just a headline-grabbing maneuver? Oh, it's real all right. Making the Wrangler out of aluminum would definitely help improve fuel efficiency, and every vehicle in an automaker's lineup has to play its part. Even just improving it by a few miles per gallon can make all the difference between meeting the law or not. What I love about you, our viewers, is how you can look at the same set of facts and come away with a completely different viewpoint. Case in point, Ron Paris says, OMG, not another GM Isuzu truck tie-up? Anything but that again. What are these people thinking? And yet, Rivera Notario says, 
Teaming up with the Suzu makes total sense for GM. They've never stopped selling their D-Max in South America and Australia anyway. Speaking of trucks, Lex says, what about the upcoming 2016 Honda Ridgeline? Will it have any impact on the midsize pickup market? No, not unless Honda goes with a body on frame truck and not unless it makes the pickup bed look like a box instead of having the sides of the bed go up and blend into the cab, just doesn't look trucky enough. Swing Low 33 saw our interview with the president of Lamborghini at the Paris Auto Show and asks, how do the auto execs come to the decision to build concept cars? Stefan Winkelmann says it depends on the reaction of the public, but how does that work? Do they have someone survey people at random? You bet they do, Swing Low. If you go to auto shows during the public days, you may spot eager young people with clipboards and questionnaires asking people what they think about a car. They'll even ask about specific styling features, such as the grill or the wheel well flares. And if enough of the right people say they like something, it's much more likely to make it into production. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. We truly like getting them all. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.